untouchability is still continuing. Untouchability and atrocities are the present day problems. But casteism is the system that we have to challenge. It is the mindset we have to challenge. We are talking about Ambedkar, educate, agitate. That is what is going on. Organizing is not going on. We have to organize and bring our people into the movement and see that our Dalit movements are challenging the systems of casteism. I'm not sure if you know, folks have followed what's happening in the United States and why uh, the Black Lives Matter movement has come about. But every 28 hours, a black man was killed by police in the United States. In 2013, two years later, 2015, every eight hours, a black man, a black woman, a trans person is killed in the United States at the hand of the police. The intersection between my immigrant status as an undocumented immigrant in the U.S. and also my LGBTQ identity was that basically I, I had to live with the fear of the police constantly. I also had to live with the fear of being kicked out of my own house, uh, living in the streets, which basically would mean that I would get deported back to Brazil to live in deep poverty again. Uh, and, and I mention all of this because there are 265 LGBTQ immigrants in the United States that are undocumented. Um, living in horrible conditions in detention centers. Um, uh, trans women are 15 times more likely to be uh, raped in detention. Uh, with detention centers are basically jails for immigrants. Uh, and uh, gay men are 10 times more likely to be raped in a detention center. And for us to finally build a tr truly internationalist movement, we need to be able to uh, use every tool in our disposal. How do we build bridges with the movements that we have just heard. There's a movement uh, of the black movements which have there, the LGBT movements and others, because how do we build and strengthen these linkages with the movements? The casteism is so bitter discrimination that has suffered till now to the Asian people and the color, discrimination based on color, based on race, is suffer the whole world and we are united now to fight against all forms of discrimination and we will walk together, hand together and fight together. If systems of oppression are global, if the exploitation of human beings and the land is something that has been globalized, we must globalize solidarity or co-responsibility. Whose lives matter is not only domestically important, but internationally in terms of whose lives are counted. We have to, we have, to have a strong collaboration and uh, understand on Dalit and uh, racial issues across the globe. We have to engage systematically with political party, government, media, and society within the country and the beyond country. Systems of oppression and exploitation are the same. We need to globalize the solidarity. But the, before globalizing the solidarity, we need to nationalize the solidarity. Um, it doesn't have to be that we only build local power or that we only global power. We need to be able to find the way in which the two things are standing together. We remember here the Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar Babasar, who also had once said, if Karl Marx was born in Asia, he would have written casteism, not the capitalism. They will find their echo in Ambedkar's statement in 1932. That is, Capitalism and Brahminism, these are the twin enemies of the laboring classes. We are at present 
living in a Brahminical, patriarchal society. And Dalit movements also in India, sorry to say that, has a Brahminical, patriarchal padda. They are not taking up uh, women issue seriously. Leadership in the women's, Dalit women's movement. See the leadership here itself. Where are the Dalit women leadership at the South Asian level? At the Asian level? At the country level? It's not just us and them. There is an us and inner us layers that we need to begin and open the conversations. Right. Whether it is within the Dalits, whether it's the gender, whether it's the aspect of uh, us as political. There are several layers I think we need to consider. And I look to the possibility of personal narratives, uh, the ways in which we understand ourselves, the ways in which we declare ourselves publicly, the starting points of solidarity within social movements, because it is not until these personal conversations happen within and not at abstract principle level, but at personal level, that movements come together and solidarities are made more possible. Thank you. So we need, a, the point I'm making, we need within in the, the dialogue, a, syst a systematic dialogue you know, to address the intersectional differences and, uh, you know, uh, discriminations. I want to share some uh, good e example what we, are, we, are, we have done in Nepal. Like, we are organizing the social movement dialogue forum. We, we have a lot of uh, like, uh, types of groups, the women movement, Dalit movement, indigenous movement, Madhesh movement, LGBTI movement, like disability movement. Well, most of people, like the, most of the population, they are fighting and uh, speaking uh, for rights. So intersectionalities, opening up conversations and opening up layers within ourselves, which prevent the kind of a more democratization that needs to be done. And then... I'd be for our common responsibility to fight against the elimination of any kind of inequalities. As a member of state, I believe the state should be play a greater role in accepting responsibility in addressing the issue of inequalities. I have to radicalize my people, politicize my people, make them to stand up to their right. The, way, the question is we have to also try to get and win over the support from the oppressors. Because as she just now mentioned, all instruments of coercion, all instruments of power, all in instruments of influence, they are in the hands of the oppressors. That's why it is quite necessary to build up the dialogue and win over the more and more sections, liberal sections, because if everybody oppressor is absolutely not subject to change at all, no problem will be solved. Three points in my point of view. Three P means politics, participation, and power. If we are involved in politics, if we grab the power, and if we have uh, participation, then we will have the access to a state. If, if we have the access to a state, then we can uh, allocate the budget, allocate the privileges, and then I think slowly the discrimination decreases slowly and slowly. And we have to stand for justice, economic justice, social justice. We are anti-patriarchy. Then what we have to be? We have to be feminist and in this time of you know religious intoleration and aggression we have to speak about fundamentalism we have to stand for secularism so these things have to be understood and spelled out clearly but we think act and create transnational bridges of solidarity and stand up against oppression together. Imperialism, capitalism, and patriarchy will be annihilated. 
But how do we establish a responsibility as part of a process of making a more just society? How do we establish this responsibility? How can we shift to understand that we are all linked to each other? It reminds us that the response in responsibility means that you are asked to respond to another human being. I hope that this event can help us move beyond solidarity toward co-responsibility, to support each other's work and really address the systemic and the structural causes of the violence of casteism and racism.